Hey, Fiends of the Pod, it's your host, Nate Wyckoff, reminding you to like, subscribe, and share our content with your friends and family. Hey, even if you hate us, share us with your enemies. Also, go to cultinclassicfilms.com and cultinclassicfilms.com slash subscribe so you can get our releases of amazing, exclusive cult films uh, on Blu-ray. Really cool stuff. You can get uh, monthly shipments to your door so you can be the one of your friends that says, hey, I've seen a movie you haven't seen. It is a great, great honor. So thank you so much, and here's the episode. Welcome to Cult and Classic. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fiends, to another episode of Cult and Classic Films Podcast, the podcast where we bring you two thematically linked films, usually one mainstream and one cult, and talk about them both. Uh, you could argue that both of these are kind of mainstream and kind of cult, uh, but, you know, we're not sticklers. So last... It even out. It Just even, like exactly. out. So exactly. like one fully cult and one fully, like, mainstream. I And this is, we'll talk about it, but there's something special about this pairing. Uh, of course, I'm your host, film critic and comedian Nate Wyckoff, and with me today is Mandy Longley. How are you doing, Mandy? Hey, feeling slow today. Feeling but slow. Faster than I see you. Yeah. That is, that is appropriate, because today we're talking about part two of our Animals Behaving Badly double feature. Last week it was Cocaine Bear from 2023, directed by Elizabeth Banks, which we loved. And today it is Slother House from 2023. Slother House is sort of what the title implies, a sloth is taken from the wild, sold as a uh, an exotic pet, uh, illegally kind of sold. Anyway, it, this girl at a sorority house at what is clearly a very fancy school uh, receives a sloth. And she uh, uses the fame of the sloth as a house mascot to try and win the presidential election of their sorority house against a former friend who is sort of the plastic mean girl, a la Rachel McAdams and Mean Girls. Uh, this is a PG-13 horror movie, and it is about a sloth that goes on a murderous rampage. The sloth is both what you would expect, but also very much not what I expected. Uh, and and I will talk about that. So, first things first. If you have uh, the Hulu streaming service, you can absolutely see Slother House for free on that service right now. Similarly to last uh, episode of this pairing we talked about cocaine bear it's on i believe is it amazon prime it must be amazon prime i believe so you can stream these if you have your wide variety of streaming services at your disposal the difference between these two the reason why i called cocaine bear our uh, mainstream feature is because that did have a wide national theater release whereas slother house has not it went to uh, directly to streaming and but there's something that tells you that it was picked up by Hulu, much in the same way Amazon Prime snapped up Velocipaster, which we talked about several episodes ago. It is, I think, uh, more polished than the average schlock movie. Uh, and that's not always a compliment. Uh, in this case, though, I think it works. So you know the plot. There's not really, you don't have to know a great deal of the plot to know. Uh, Sloth goes into a sorority house, begins killing the sorority members. And of course, they have to figure it out and then defeat the sloth. Mandy, what were you expecting when uh, you sat down to watch Slother House 2023? I was expecting a much less polished turd of a movie, <laughs> uh, you know, but it, it was surprisingly um, like exactly what I would have expected as well. You know, like from the title, Sloth, Slaughterhouse, like, you know, scary movie-esque kind of. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be so campy and goofy, mm -hmm. you know, and I yeah, love it's definitely, that. It's a horror comedy. Yeah. I mean, it really is yeah. in much the way cocaine bear was definitely a horror film. As far as gruesomeness, mm -hmm. it was very funny. And this has yeah. much of the same vibe, but this has like, not so much like the vibe or like cocaine bear was like funny in its own right. Yeah. I don't remember like a ton of other pop culture references, yeah, especially true. like other horror film references in mm -hmm. Cocaine Bear. Slaughterhouse is full of so other many. pop culture like movie references. Yes. And not like horror film references, just like scary movie is full of them. Mm -hmm. It is full of it is like Mean Girls, like you mentioned, like literally there are references to Mean Girls yes. throughout the film. Um both in like visualization, imagery, and like 
the vocabulary or right. lines that are in the film. So, I mean, like that was cool and funny mm -hmm. and not expected, but I loved it because I mean, it was referencing a lot of movies. Like, like I mean, they use the line, um, like Han Solo and Princess Leia, like "I love you, I know." I know, and yeah. I was like, "No way!" Like, I guess yeah. the references are very broad. Yeah, and there. they're also. Like you said, there's 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 a lot of um, Easter eggs sort of in the language that they caught from mm -hmm. from other movies, but also as you said, there's lots of visual cues. Like they shot for shot, pretty much uh, copy the hollow the end of Halloween, 1978, where Michael Myers uh, is shot and falls out the window and lands in the yard, and Jimmy Lee Curtis is like, okay, basically it's done. Turns around and then turns back around and he's gone. That's that's literally in this movie. You like there's no question it's it's not a direct homage um and there's lots of them like you said mm -hmm. i th i think this movie too it's i guess what i was expecting so cocaine bear the bear is is less of a character and more of a force it's sort of like that um if you play an old sim any sim city game you know like it's the random tornado that pops up that you can't really plan for um it's and it is a bit of a character, like it's goofy and we know it's it's drive is to get cocaine for the most part. But Slother House, I expected something similar. You know, there's a crazy sloth fighting its way through. He, it is very much, she, I guess, is very much a character. Um, she actually interacts with them as though, and it gets more bonkers as the film goes on. Like it starts out and more sloth-like. And then as it goes, it's a sloth that can both, you know. <laughs> It starts out so much sloth like as like that creepy puppet from the Saw movies riding a tricycle. <laughs> well, there's this great like... I, I loved the opening and I expected I was like, oh, I wish this happened in the opening. And then it did, which is we see the sloth uh on a branch trying to reach something to I guess it's going to eat a leaf or flower uh on the end of this branch that's over this river. And as it's reaching over a a I don't know if it's a I have no ge geography is not my strong suit, um, but a crocodile or an alligator, depending on where the sloth is supposed to be housed, uh, leaps up and grabs the sloth and drags it under. And then we see blood come up on the surface. And then after an unusually long time, we see the sloth's paw come out and then it climbs out and then it leaves. And we see these poachers who are, who are trying to capture animals go up and mm -hmm. they see this gator float up and then roll over. It. And it's got the three toed scratch marks in its belly and, you know, implication being the the sloth killed the giant gator and that's of course what happens the sloth can kill all sorts of things including people um we have i want to touch on the cast because we actually have a fairly strong cast with some some notable people in there from from other things for our our lead the uh sort of popularity obsessed girl who has to learn that popularity is not everything is played by uh, Lisa Ambalavanar that is a lot of A's Ambalavanar and she is uh, I recognized her from playing Jinx in the final season of DC's Titans on HBO uh, HBO Max or Max whatever they're calling it now Discovery Plus I don't know uh, but uh, she was great in that so it was nice to see her in this she very much has a uh, sort of like a, a Vanessa Hudgens, Naya Rivera presence and almost appearance too. Like she's likable, but sort of aloof. She's not, you identify with her a little, but she's much farther to the, to, to than the normal person. Like we all want to be popular, all kind of want the recognition, but she goes the next step. Um, and she randomly meets at the beginning of the film, a, uh, a guy, I believe they call him Olgo, uh, something along those lines. And he is played by uh, a, a well, I think, well-known actor right now, who is a Stefan Capis. Jeez, these names, I'm sorry, all you all know, listening to this podcast that I'm not good at names, but uh, Stefan or Steven, depending on how he likes it, Kapicic, K-A-P-I-C-I-C. -I -C. You got to get your pen and paper out for this episode, guys. Uh, but he is probably recognizable to everyone listening to this podcast uh, in voice only, at least, because he played, uh, he provided the voice for Colossus in Deadpool and the upcoming Deadpool 3. He also was uh, one of the crew members in The Last Voyage of the Demeter from 2023, which I talked about briefly in a summer uh, movie recap, uh, which I, I do recommend checking out that 
take on Dracula. It was a lot of fun. So busy man, busy, busy man. Uh, we also have the mean girl uh, from this, uh, who is is horror fans may also recognize her, perhaps with um, for for less popular films, uh, but she does a decent job. It's Sydney Craven, and she was the lead in Jeepers Creepers Reborn from 2022, which has the the, the dubious honor of being the first film I have walked out of in. 15 years no more than wow. that 20 25 years uh it, was it is that bad. it was that bad uh it was offensively bad um and i i don't if i remember correctly i didn't have great things to say about her performance but it's always a caveat when your script is that bad uh and the directing is that meh it is it is hard to judge someone's talent level i think in this movie she did an interesting job of playing sort of a stereotype, which I think is what this, the plot probably called for on, on paper, which is she is the mean girl. You know, she does the finger waves to like brush off uh, sycophants when she's done with them. Uh, she gives the like fake smile. Oh, that's great. And then like the evil look and like, you know, threatens under her breath kind of thing. She does that very well. Uh, her, she doesn't have an arc in the the film and that would be more of an issue if the film was more about pro personal progression right like in mean girls which i do think this movie does take a lot of inspiration from uh aside from the killer sloth it's a mean girl's uh, oma it's it's a mean girl's take she rachel mcadams character does have a progression right she's awful she's mean she gets one put over on her for once and she blows up and then she has like a crippling injury that changes her perspective when she gets out of it. And she finds a new outlet for all of her rage that presumably lets her be a, a better person. Uh, when, you know, when she's not on the, on the lacrosse field or whatever she's playing, I forget. So that's an arc. Uh, the character, uh, the, the Craven plays in this movie, she has, she changes at the end, but we don't see an arc. Um, it's more of a, Heck, I don't know. It's just I it, feel like scared straight by a sloth. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of like you know, the fear. Yeah. The fear yeah. changed her her behavior. And uh, which is an interesting, you know, I don't think it's that important. And we will talk about the ending specifically because the ending is I have very few complaints for this movie. The the ending is one of two in particular. Uh although I don't think it really ruins the experience. We have uh, a couple more people I wanted to mention, but we have uh Olivia Royer. Jeez, man, the, I'm so sorry to the the crew of or the cast of this film, Olivia R O U Y R E. Uh, she plays the friend uh, who is the kind of only voice of reason in the film, uh, especially in the beginning of the film, talking to our lead, trying to convince her that the sloth needs to go back to the jungle uh, or wherever it came from. It's it's not okay to have it uh, and to sort of exploit it even though it seems happy, right? Uh, she has been in quite a few shorts. Uh, she's also, she was in the TV series High School, uh, which aired in 2022, and she was in seven episodes. And then we also, um, you might've seen her in American Horror Stories, also on Hulu at the moment, playing Finn in an episode from 2022. So pretty much everybody here has credits to their name. Um, one more actress uh, that I want to talk about, or actor uh, is, is kind of the preferred term, although IMDb still puts actress and actor. Bianca Beckles Rose. Um, Bianca Beckles Rose plays, how would you phrase it? The, the comic relief friend. The like. Oh, is that what she was? I, I that don't was know. my correct about I, the film. Yes, exactly. I guess there are three I have. Um, <laughs> she's, is it's almost, if, if you were to say like, if you were to try and sum that character up for like a, a call sheet, you would mm. probably say uh, lesbian fraternity bro with like a really doofy voice. Like this really like Polly Shore playing yeah. a lesbian. <laughs> like, yes. Like under like an undercover frat boy pretending to be a lesbian in a sorority. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it's Polly Shore from the nineties. This is sort of the the complaint. There's a couple of things that that 
threw me off about this performance. And I think that's the biggest problem is that it threw me out of the movie. And let me tell you, it takes kind of a, a, a big misstep or two to pull you out of a movie where a sloth is, is an intelligent sloth is killing people in a sorority house. I mean, you already have, you, you already have, yeah, that's right. You already have taken a lot of, um, you've accepted a lot of, of bizarreness, but in this case, sort of like I mentioned with, um, with our, our, our mean girl, Rachel McAdams character being in a different world than our lead. Our lead is kind of in a real world. She acts in a very realistic way. Uh, and, and the mean girl is a stereotype. She acts like a stereotype of very, very sort of cartoonish overwrought comedic moments, you know, uh, like the hand raised to like wave an underling off. I brought that up, but she does it several times. Uh, and then we have, you know, this, this, I don't think it's, I don't think they make a specific mention that she's a lesbian, but she does, she's portrayed as like a film stereotype as a lesbian. She dresses very uh, typically masculine. She always, she's, she's a sports person. It's just a lot of the the tropes that we hear about. Um, yeah, sort of, but she has like a bait pool out to try to get like pledges that's, to come that's swim. Right. Yeah, it's never, I don't think it's ever said, but it's pretty obvious. Then um, she gets like all excited about like, the shower like rushing that's right thing. yeah that's right and yeah. you're like gross like and, yeah do you how do you how do you add um how do you how do you ruin a female-centric film without adding a male character you add yeah. uh, a male character that's technically a female character uh, mm. or a, a identifies as a woman it was yeah. a misstep and the biggest problem i had is that between the voice and the cartoonish overacting of her character mm -hmm. it did not fit with the rest of the movie like you mentioned no. scary movie that character would have fit in a scary movie type skit comedy like there were they, they hit they're so mm -hmm. over the top like or rather scary movie four right they're over the top it's just it's it's ridiculous to the point of pure absurdity um and and this movie doesn't actually feel like that like it veers farther and farther to to zaniness as it goes gets closer to the to the climax but with, mm -hmm. with the sloth becoming more, more capable at human activities, driving a car, um, as you said, taking selfies, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, lots of things like that. Um, doing the Bruce Lee, you know, come here to fight with its little three claws. There's lots of moments like that as the movie goes on. And it, and it works because they think it's gradual, right? Like it's, it's, it's not an immediate, like we know the sloth isn't normal after it kills the gator, but it acts very much like a sloth. Uh, what you would expect you know it's very slow it clings to the bedpost it eats flowers in the dorm room it just lets people pick it up and carry it around it's like we kind of okay it's a sloth but then it gets wilder and wilder but this friend character who i kept thinking would either be a murder victim or would just be dropped uh doesn't just stick around but she continues to be a bigger part of the the happenings and it's unfortunate the the final piece that really didn't work for me was her voice choice. And several of the cast members in Slother House are um, English and she's one of them. And I don't, I, I, I think that what happened is with, with Bianca Beckles Rose is that she used an, a really ridiculous, like, fat boy, duh, like Polly Shore voice, as you said, to try and cover an accent. The problem is when you do that, it, it, it still, it doesn't come out right. Like if you've ever, like I have, um, I had a, a friend, a very awesome guy named uh, Yoshi, who is, you know, from um, uh, Osaka, I believe. And he, we asked him one time for a short film to do, uh, could he do a British accent? Because he, he spent a lot of time in London. And it was the most insane sounding thing ever to someone because he already has an accent when he's speaking English. And so when he tries to do a dialect or a real uh, heavy accent in English with his own accent, it go it veers into madness territory. Um, that's kind of what happens here. But it's I, I use this term a lot lately because I think it fits. It's like an uncanny valley moment. She sounds like she's doing that stereotypical dumb guy voice but it doesn't come out right. It's just off enough that it's distracting. And that's my whole, that's my biggest overall problem with that character. She's distracting. 
it does not yeah, fit. I couldn't understand like a lot of the lines. Yeah. Like, um, I was just like, what? Like, I'm an old person. I got to turn on the subtitles. So I don't understand yeah. what this crazy lady is saying. I just, and you, frankly, you don't need to, right? Because her character is insanely stereotypical um, mm-hmm. and also gets more ridiculous as she goes on. It's, But it's also that thing, right? Like, you don't want to start at a 10 because then you have nowhere to go. And she mm. never comes down. Like, her character is always at this, like, over the top, yeah. like, slamming down on the couch, you know, in basketball shorts and like, bro, the TV's on. Oh, it's sports. Yeah. Rah, rah. Like, it's just, it's, it's too much. Um, so that, that was a problem for me as well. Luckily she does pop in and out for the most part until late in the film. Um, everyone else is pretty fine innocuous. Most everyone else is just a a victim, right? We get a lot of the sorority members. They're only introduced to eventually be killed by the sloth. And that's typical for a slasher film like this and some monster movies. Uh, I think this is more of a slasher film. I did film. love that the, that the beginning and the end of searching for these victims was they like basically just texted their friend and they were like, has anyone seen so-and-so? Yeah. Like, yeah. they were like missing for like two weeks in the sorority house. Like, yeah, there's not dead. a lot of classes <laughs> at this college. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of... I don't so this this the sorority house is massive, right? It's 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 Wayne Manor. Um it was like it's Wayne Manor or like uh Newport, Rhode Island mansion. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a big house. mansion kind of vibe. And well, also it's still like a massive four year. Like it's like it, it's, oh, like, it's it's insane. It's, the, yeah. it's the mansion from Resident Evil in white. Okay, you know, like it's go. it's just huge. And it's also a little weird because there's a couple of lines that should have been pulled from the script because of the sets mm-hmm. because they don't really they didn't add anything and they distract it like those classic lines where um somebody is like oh look at the butt on that person and you go and they have no butt you're like look i know it's in the script just change it change it because what you're looking at, it does not make sense it's like when we talked about veronica and he's like get away from that woman and they're like seven feet away from each other you're like <laughs> what do you mean like you're closer than i am uh they just need to change the lines and the ones that i specifically noticed the most were uh when uh, um Ambalavanar's character the lead is is talking with her friends and vice versa and it's mentioned that like oh the mean girl is uh is is just a she's just a rich bitch and i'm like you're all rich none of you have a scholarship to live in this giant ass sorority house on what must be you know washington university like ridiculously huge expensive campus um so that that's weird it doesn't play right like uh i went to an expensive undergrad school which i will be paying off until i am dust in a in a casket and i don't like i i would never say like oh uh, you're you're rich and i'm poor like this is not i know that i'm very privileged in that respect so it's weird to hear that and it didn't add to the plot at all we already knew this character was a jerk so what is it okay she's rich whatever you can't make her more jerky than you're already portraying her um there are some other things that are are put in the script that don't really matter um but they don't really bother they didn't bother my viewing experience which is the poacher who's selling the sloth and other animals he is giving the sloth anxiety pills because the sloth apparently suffers from anxiety and it's implied at that point that the the violence from the sloth is due to its high its high anxiety which is actually kind of a great i I love that idea like because you're like oh he's or she's so anxious that she goes on these tears she has little psychotic breaks or it's that he was just trying to keep the sloth calm right trying to keep it docile which is funny for a sloth because we think they're already pretty docile however that argument didn't quite take with me because the way he handles the sloth, it doesn't. Com- he doesn't communicate that the sloth is violent, and that's why it's having these pills. Like it just mm. doesn't. So I-, I don't know how you're supposed to take that, and you expect it to come up later because she's like, "Oh, you're supposed to have these pills," but then she stops giving it to him. And there's this. I scene. don't know how she knew oh, it was supposed to have the pills. I don't either. Like, that it, doesn't because make she any finds sense. the pills on the ground. Um, I guess it said for sloth. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe like uh, for sloth's anxiety problem. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it could, I, you know, I guess it could be, it's, 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 it's irrelevant, yeah. but, but again, it seems like it sort of dropped because 
there's one scene where it it could potentially i feel like they were trying to make it relevant which is i think actually a pretty great scene it's the first inkling we see that this sloth is not going to be even remotely normal yet it still doesn't totally break which is when she leaves her her dorm room and she's been using the mouse clicking through photos on some facebook or something or some you know some movie knockoff and the sloth moves its way over there and like tentatively touches the mouse and clearly like very quickly understands oh you you click this and see different pictures and he's clicking through the pictures and it seems like she's actually kind of like in becoming endeared towards this girl like she's happy whatever and then she sees the selfie that the girl took with the the poacher that she met uh and and then it loses it and it's like ah and then you're like oh okay this is why the sloth now will kill everyone in in proximity which i get and that because the way the sloth acted and freaked out i'm like okay that's anxiety right they're having a panic attack i think having had panic attacks i think mass murder is probably an, a, an understandable response maybe not defensible but it is understandable um but that never comes back and it's not really you don't expect a huge amount of nuance and reading into things in a movie like this uh it it should be pretty i think made very clear what would have been super hilarious is if the sloth took one of the pills yes like herself yes like if it was popping him the whole time um you know that would be pretty great and and we get to the point where the sloth could do that right the sloth is very human mm -hmm. uh by the end uh and and so that's interesting it was a it was a thread that i didn't mind i thought it had more potential uh and it wasn't really realized i also really loved the some of the the attack scenes once everybody knows that the sloth has been killing just everyone and and our our core group of friends is like the only bunch left we get we get scenes of like the the plastic girl running towards the front door in the background and then just the sloth puppet just flying off screen and like knocking her feet across out of frame like it's very funny it's physical comedy and it it was smart like the the framing choices um that the director made i think were solid uh, a lot of the time and the director you haven't mentioned this um they're relatively new uh directed there um uh, uh they've done a lot more acting than these things but the, it's directed by matthew goodhue who did do a, a feature-length film in 2020 called woe which is i believe more serious i've not seen it myself and then we have uh two writers credited for this which um is bradley fowler who again is is been doing more acting uh or has more acting credits than writing credits but has written quite a few shorts um wrote the film novel love from 2022 the voices from 2020 again i haven't seen these films but you know they they were completed and they clearly had some release budget and then the the second writer was katie lanigan who is uh an actor and this is her first writing credit so and she also i believe if memory serves you know i have so many notes listeners this is a this is what I'm doing. I click through my notes as though I can quickly find things, which I cannot. Um, and yeah, and Katie Lanigan is one of the uh, one of the girls in the sorority. She plays a character named Morgan, who I think is the sort of the right the the nerdy right hand person of our uh, our plastic character. So, also, I I can't believe I forgot. There is a another character that is a pure delight um and i don't remember what her name is but <laughs> she it, is uh, ms mayflower miss mayflowers tiff stevenson she plays miss mayflower and she is the house mother and she uh -huh. is just great uh she's a comedian <laughs> so if you if you haven't seen go you can check out um she has a she has some stuff online she's very very funny uh and i just her character is fantastic. She's an alcoholic, um, never was, who regrets her life in staying with the sorority and urges our hero to not be. But she kicks ass. She fights the sloth the most effectively in the movie and unfortunately dies. But they do the old, you know, they've got the setup and the, the, the framing as though it's the end of Terminator 2 when the engineer is, is dying and he's got this 
tragic death scene but they pull the old trick where she seems like she dies like four times uh and keeps like jerking back to life um she was just she made me laugh the most uh next to the sloth in the whole film um oh my gosh the line where it was like the young sorority girl is like oh we're someone who's in her 60s and blah 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 she's like what i'm like 40 yeah <laughs> it's just like she just she plays it incredibly well like i don't think if this were a movie made uh with a huge budget for universal or something um they they would have cast uh what was her name jennifer from um legally blonde you know like it would have been that sort of heavy-handed uh used up kind of person to play a used up person but it's she's perfect i wouldn't have, have removed tiff from this for any amount of money um she's a delight she's been in tons of stuff shorts features tv uh all sorts of things so uh you know if you if you like her performance check out her comedy and and watch her stuff because i think she does she deserves it uh the sloth so we'll get to the ending because the it, what did you think about the ending it's sort of a happy ending for the people right very fetch <laughs> yes Yes, that's a good that's a good way to put it. We get the death scene for the sloth. Uh, spoiler: the sloth does die. It shouldn't yeah. be a huge does it? surprise. I okay. don't know. So here's I think the they thing: they were kind of open that I, maybe the sloth died and maybe she took it back to the rainforest. So I agree, and I wish we had more indication of that because the sloth at the at the very end is seems like it's dying, and it there's this picture of the jungle, uh, in, hanging in the lobby of the sorority house that of course has never really been shown before why there's a picture of a jungle i have no idea but um it just reaches this little clause to it and we see that the 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 lead is like oh my friend was right kind of moment she should have just gone back and uh and that's kind of a touching moment because you're like oh that the sloth really would have been happier in the jungle killing gators and whatever i came across um and then the we flash forward about three years i think uh, or a year or something like that i don't know sometime it's yeah some time yeah. where they've graduated or whatever and they are they and the the three four friends the four friends because the three original friends uh are lead the one that is the level-headed one the ridiculous characterization of a lesbian which <laughs> we could probably move past in, in this day and age and then um the the uh the, the plastic the mean girl they're all friends mm -hmm. again and they have created an organization that's like free sloths or some weird thing like relocate animals i don't remember what it's called but yeah mm -hmm. they have one of these little things where they're handing out flyers to a new college incoming freshmen and whatnot and i'm like okay like all right that's that's something i guess and you keep waiting for that button on their part like what's the one what's gonna what are we gonna see that classic horror movie something's not right with them or whatever yeah, but wasn't there but on their table like uh, it said fetch like the acronym yes. for their sorry yes it fetch. did that's what it is yes um yeah. freeing every i don't know something i don't remember what it was but yes and which of course is know. which is a huge mean girl reference mm -hmm. right like stop trying to make fetch happen uh and so that's that's lovely as well but I wanted something more with them. And then we get a little bit of credits, like the first big credits, big title cards. And then we cut to the jungle and there's like a group of tourists being led by a guide. And there's a little kid who's really close to the water. And they're like, no, no, no. no. And they pull him away as a gator like shows up or crocodile, whatever. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, I do know the difference. I just don't know where they are. Uh, mm -hmm. And and we never get a good look at this now. Okay. Don't judge yeah, me. No, I we don't. They kind of have like more of a crocodile tail with like the taller right. ridge yeah, it was, it was, on the was on the tail. It, it, you assume, and it's very large so i don't know exactly mm -hmm. where but again uh it and then we see the kid pull back and then they're like oh look and it's a sloth moving very slowly hanging down from the branch and then they take a photo and we see the photo and then it goes back to the credits and i the implication mm -hmm. is yes this, there's a sloth is it the same sloth is it a different sloth this kid's awfully close to this sloth like it makes you a little nervous i know i know the intent i wanted more right mm -hmm. i wanted um like i wanted like a drop of blood from the sloth's claw or i want the sloth to take the camera like it shows a series of photos right and the sloth is getting closer like, and then the sloth is doing a selfie with them right like yeah. something to indicate that it is the same sloth because it's mm -hmm. a you don't want the sloth to die the sloth is in my opinion well, a great character um the sloth was immortal 
Like, yeah, and the sloth gets stabbed, like five times, shot, but, you know, beaten, yeah. um, and it's unstoppable. Yes, throw uh, out a window. Like, I would, yeah. I would Came live baseball bat. Yeah, I would live for a sequel where the sloth has has. I don't know what they're called. Kits, uh, babies of some kind. Oh, baby uh, sloth, mother yeah. sloth, like mother sloth, like all the cocaine bear, mm-hmm. you know, with the, with the cubs. Like that would be a huge delight. Um, that would be great. So yeah, so my hope, of course, which I think others would as well, is that it was the same sloth. Um, but you don't know, right? Is it a different sloth? Is it like the other sloth? If it's a different sloth, uh, I wanted something a little less happy. Twin sister for... sloth, sloth, yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, the the mate of the sloth. I don't know. Um, oh wow that's, that's an interesting angle they right stole my woman that's right like um i'm gonna hit your ride to the states yeah i i wanted something a little more and the happy ending like without any sort of caveats except that all their friends are dead but you know hey um they didn't seem like that great of friends to begin with uh the, the, the characters are all happy and there's no like there's no button on their part right like i wanted some sort of button on their part like we go to a uh one of the incoming people who's taken a, a pamphlet for a fetch and like they see something in the tree right and we just mm-hmm. see the claw move out of the way like something i wanted something more because it deserves it and it's also this is this is essentially a slasher film right like it is even though it's a, 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 a an animal or a monster or whatever you want to call the sloth it is a film where there is a a killer you know brutally murdering people and nobody knows who it is or they can't find it or they can't defeat it you know it's closer to um a a slasher than say a classic monster film you know the creature isn't coming out of the swamp it's not attached to a location it's a stalker who's hunting people and in that way and with the size and some of the camera work it's very much modeled i think after chucky and and you know child's play because Mm -hmm. that's chucky has personality he's not mindless and he also has, um, he gets more ridiculous when he's observed, right? When he's actually found out, he's the most redonkulous. And I, I got those vibes through the whole thing. And like you said, it's not, I don't think it's out of line to take these big parallels into consideration because there's so, there's so many Easter eggs, references, homages mm-hmm. in this movie. Um, it's, it does feel like a love letter to the 80s horror genre. Uh, I think, and and that includes or, or '80s in general, because I I would argue that Mean Girls is a very '80s style movie, even though it's contemporary in placement and, mm-hmm. and in filming. The colors, right? The the colors tell you everything. It's pastels. The characters. It's an awkward John Hughes style um, high school group. Um, it is. It feels to me very '80s. We don't get a lot of that kind of high school vibe, except for maybe the Disney Channel anymore, where they're trying to keep that wholesome high school but also with the struggles of growing up we just don't get that as much anymore um and it so because of I that i wonder if that was like strongly informed by tina face like high school experience like the yeah. time she was in high school which checks there yeah, yeah. I, and and that's and so yeah I, I think it's very it wears its it's most of its influences on its sleeve and it's not a bad thing um aside from the the odd character uh, of the of the friend and of the lesbian friend and the ending not being as satisfactory as I wanted it to be for me the only other critique I had because I it didn't really matter to me that like the thread of the anxiety meds were dropped and not clearly explained like that stuff it it was not it was never the meat of the movie anyway right uh to me it, it's the fact that the second half maybe the last third the pace changes and we get a little bit repetitive that makes it feel slow right like mm-hmm. we see i agree see... they also they also dropped some of like the common visuals that were happening in the front half like with the social media stuff like yes they, they seem like they were just like ah i don't know if they like ran out of budget for putting the special effects in there or what but like that f- lack of continuity also yeah. felt weird yeah they in didn't the beginning... like follow that bit all the way through the film which is a bummer because I think it worked in the beginning, right? We got every time we, a new character walked in, we would get sort of like that anime thing. We would get their stats on their social media presence because that's what the lead wants. She wants a big social media presence. She equates it with, uh, you know, being popular, which let me tell you something, it means absolutely nothing unless you're monetized. It does not mean a thing. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. And that and that and I think you could have brought it back. You could have put a really good tag on it 
by giving us the sloth stats at the right. end in the jungle like something because that would have also indicated that it is or, the same sloth right? even something. like the like the kid who takes the photo or like oh yeah something you know like i don't know like i feel like it could have been carried through more or like um it could have been used as part of the storytelling of like what was happening and maybe they were trying to do that because i feel like they were it wasn't just when it was new characters it was when the leads were coming back in and yeah. out of the story it was i think they were trying to tell the story of like how popular they were getting in comparison to each other uh yeah um, that could be it. but they weren't putting quite enough emph emphasis on it mm. or leaving it on the screen quite long enough i think for it mm. really to <clears throat> make that full impact um in, in that storytelling way um or maybe my brain just works a lot slower than teenagers who are used to <laughs> looking at those kinds of things and instantly digesting them yeah I, I think i think you're on to something though i think that i would be curious to know from uh matthew goodhue and, and the writers i'd be curious to know what was changed along the way what was edited and cut because there actually is a huge chunk. The majority of the movie, I would argue, does not factor the sloth in. It's actually a fairly well, you know, decently crafted sort of, I don't want to say dollar bin, but um, discount Mean Girls, right? Like we get a lot of that and it's fine. Um, and it, it's engaging enough. I, the characters for the most part were, I'm like, okay, I see this is, the, this is that trope. This is that trope. And I'm following the lead. Uh, and then you know, the sloth comes in and we could have had those threads farther along. You're, I think you're right. And it's sort of like, it, it almost could have been two movies put together. Um, the characters, I think, stay consistent enough to prevent that from really happening. Like there's, I always think of the barometer for two movies slammed together is uh, Will Smith and I think it's Shalise Theron and Hancock, right? The first half is like a fun, drunk superhero. Like, and then the second half is like this soul crushing, bleak, tragedy like and it's just literally 50 50 and they just slammed them together and it's very disconcerting and disjointed feeling when you're watching it um this doesn't go that far because i do think the leads carry their personas appropriately through and are dealing with the madness but the sloth for me is the real the real lead of this movie much as you know chucky is the real lead of the child's play films you know there's a mm -hmm. reason why the series uh that that um uh, John has created after Chucky, uh, all of his his future films is called Chucky, right? We care about Chucky. And in that way, I think we care about the sloth. The sloth we is the do. most interesting character. Alpha was so sweet and so cute and super creepy. I want that puppet. I tell you guys, so like, creepy. how many, if you got an extra, send it our way. Um, ColtonClassicFilms.com, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would be, I would be overjoyed the the puppet also it is i don't know how much animatronics are involved because it has the slow blink that's really cute it opens his mouth sometimes um, but it's definitely a puppet and oh man i thought it was just full-on puppet the whole the it, whole way it, could, it with, very like, well little, could like, be full string for like the, the blinking very eyes possible. or something yeah um and it looks like that and it's charming like it's charming not to have mm -hmm. the 3d all the time on the puppet especially because you're that's dealing cool. with slow movements right like for mm -hmm. the most part you see the sloth moving quite slowly and deliberately, and that just requires uh, practical effects. If you did that with, I really, if this... really wanted it on a tricycle, though, I really did. yeah, the the Kermit the Kermit legs, you know the yeah, boop, 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 boop. yeah, I did. I could see that. Well, I mean, hey, it drives a car, you know. Like, I mean, he Kermit just Kermit slash it. like I mean, I still it's just really stuck in my head like that saw puppet with like the like wasn't that on a tricycle or some shit it, it is like, yep yeah. it's on a tricycle yeah. it bikes its way in um yeah i uh i any so i guess we can move on to the recommendations it's probably pretty obvious at this point um i recommend slother house if you enjoy like any of the sort of jokey uh horror films that have been coming out this is one that actually is well made and has some great humor and um if you're turned off by the pg-13 rating and you want to like oh i want gore i, I don't I don't think you'll be bored. And while it's not hugely graphically violent, I was actually surprised um, when I started watching. I was like, oh, it's PG-13. I would have expected they go all the way like Cocaine Bear. Mm. It's it's still entertaining uh, in the way that a lot of 80s horror films, because of budget in those cases, um, 
and in this case as well, stayed away from like the really gruesome kills and things that they, they didn't have the money and they made it work for the most part. And this is one of those where I think it makes it work. You already have a killer sloth killing people in weird ways. It's enough. It's enough to keep you. Um, it doesn't need the Megan treatment. And I don't think Megan needed the Megan treatment, but hey, what are you going to do? Okay, Mandy, do you recommend Slother House for 2023? And if so, why and to who? Yes, I would recommend it. I give it a solid like B. Like it yeah. was good, maybe B plus. Um, I totally on the same page with you of all kind of the drawbacks and negatives. But I mean, for the style of movies that we watch and review and love, like <laughs> it's very good. It's very good and very enjoyable. And the fact that it is on uh, a regular streaming service that's highly available to pretty much anyone. Um, like, I mean, you know, even if you're just doing one streaming service a month and swapping them out, you know, it's very accessible to be able to get this film. I, you know, it's definitely worth checking out if you like horror, like especially funny horror, like comedy yeah. horror. It's it's good. They did they did a decent job. I agree, so. and I'm I'm looking forward to the next the next outing by this this uh, crew. And I said at the beginning, this is a special uh, pairing that I want to talk about, and the special pairings. The reason for that is these are both films that our panel enjoyed like a lot. Like I, I will absolutely rewatch both of these films. I think it will be, there's a wide audience that will enjoy these films wider than, than many of the niche cult films that we, that we review um, because they're presented in a more mainstream way, but the content is just off the wall. Um, Cocaine Bear, of course, is really polished and violent and just wild dark humor. Uh, Slother House is more of an homage with goofball um, humor and lots of um, Easter eggs for uh, those cult fans like like us. So check them both out. Thank you so much for listening to Cult and Classic Films. Please go to cultandclassicfilms.com. Visit our store. You can also go to patreon.com slash cultandclassicfilms and uh, visit our store there. Uh, right now, you can, if you want to subscribe, you can email us at Colton Class at info at Colton Classic Films dot com. Uh, subscriptions for um, monthly features delivered right to your door that you won't find anywhere else. Crazy cult movies on Blu-ray with all sorts of extras like posters, milk caps, crazy cool stuff, uh, as well as standard editions. Those are available. So check them out. We cannot wait to bring you more movie madness, and we will do so uh, all the way through the end of this year into a brand new year thank you so much to play us out as always is the chud with all about evil Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Cult and Classic Podcast. This podcast is important to me, but what's more important are the rights, privileges, and freedom from violence of everyone in this country and in this world. And that means supporting Black Lives Matter. If you'd like to make a donation, please go ahead and visit cultandclassicpodcast.com where we have a list of places you can donate and help out. And please stay safe.